Hello, nice to be back. It's wonderful to have you back in Australia. Thank you. Congratulations on your new show, um, Alchemy, transforming not only yourself, but once again, your beautiful artwork. You've moved yourself up to Scotland. Yep, yep. beautiful highlands of Scotland. Absolutely wonderful. All that's the nice. Alloway, yes. yes. Yeah. And so once again, you've used that incredible eye of yours that you use for photography to create this uh, exhibition. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I suppose what I really love is taking photographs and often on my travels and uh, a lot of these pieces have actually just come from one photograph or one image if you like because um, that's how I, I start to make the pieces. Uh, it's not how most people do. Uh, I know a lot of people would say I should be drawing from them but I get so many ideas that I just have to start. Um, and I suppose after I've been doing it quite a long time, that it, I sort of know what I'm looking for within the photo, if that makes sense. So, this piece, um, which is called Treasure Trove, uh, the reason why it's called Treasure Trove is because there is a, I used a paper from the dictionary, and you can actually see the word Treasure Trove in there, so it's a bit like Where's Wally, <laughs> if you really wanted to, you could look for that word. But it was because I started off with, this is one photo and you probably can't see it, but it's of a great big huge um, like billboard sign that was in Italy and um, we were on this day trip and just before we were back, supposed to go back on the coach, there was this huge wonderful um, you know, billboard and I was thinking, oh, I need to photograph that. So I was just like taking as many pictures as I could before Richard dragged me off back onto the bus. So they're not all in focus, but um, I did get these wonderful images and then I zoomed in on them, which I often do, and there was lots of these sort of circles and layers and I knew I had to do something with those. So that's what happened. I started doing circles and layers. layers. So I have other pieces that have that form in it. And on this one, I started with a, uh, I did a paper lamination with lots of circles. I did embroidery over the top lots of circles and I used the colours that are in there so I don't you can really see where I was coming from colour wise with the browns, the greys, the blacks and so on. So, so that's that one. And then this one is called Ortigia 2 because there is an Ortigia 1 but it's not here. But this was in Ortigia in Sicily. And we kept walking past this wall. It had this amazing um, sort of mouldy wall, basically. So I took a photo, and it, to me that was a piece in the making. I didn't really have to do an awful lot other than make something. Um, so I did lots of experimenting with the greys and the blues, and I wanted it to be sort of very organic. And well, I think that's what's happened really. But yeah, so that's. So do you live with those um, pictures up on around yeah. you and just keep looking in yeah. and abstracting out? They're all, they're all stuck around the room and um, I'll start with something and I'll often make lots of samples, lots of shapes and pin them up. Um, I've, I've even got, still got ideas on the boil for the circle one that are pinned up that just haven't, I haven't had time to do anything with them yet. So. Um, yeah, they're, they're just there and they're constantly in my psyche. So, so you were mentioning about the circles in this piece behind mm. you, that you are clearly extended that idea of circles. Indeed, indeed. And it's been a bit of a circle mania thing. Although, funnily enough, the circles from this one didn't actually come from the photo from Italy. They came from a photo that I took when I was here uh, in Australia. Mm. Three, was it three years ago? Mm -hmm. And we went to Melbourne, and I was always on the lookout for something to photograph. And um, we were just crossing the road, and there was a, this amazing grill on the floor that was, it had been raining. That's what happens in Melbourne, isn't it? And it was all, says an English woman, yeah, I know, but I was in Australia. And it was all purple and white and beautiful. Anyway, I just thought, I'm going to have a picture of that. Um, and I haven't got it here, but what I did do was I zoomed in on it. And then I zoomed in on it a bit more, and when I did that, I got this lovely um, little dots. 
and little bits happening that were very similar to my favourite sort of rusty brown looking thing, even though it was actually a grill. So what I thought was I'll do something based on this little area here. And I wanted to do some little floaty circles on the top. And I did quite a few different samples and stuff, but they weren't quite doing it for me. Um, and in the end, I didn't do the wobbly floaty thing. I might do that another time. But I just appliqued them on in this, in, for this one. But that's where that came from. I mean, it's, she says, wrecking the place. You can't really see what this. This is like long pointy bit, and that's basically a literal representation from that image, but then using the uh, the sort of dots of pixelation almost uh, to create. And how have you made those? Because they're 3D. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I sort of, uh, I, don't know if you probably, I don't know if you've heard of them here, but in Scotland they have Tunnock's tea cakes, which I absolutely love, and they're little round <laughs> chocolate things. And while I was making them, all I could think of was Tunnock <laughs> tea cakes. It's in direction, get me some Tunnock tea cakes. But uh, that's nothing to do with it, is it? But, yeah. they're, um, the, so I embroidered the circles um, on my digital computer thing, and I actually used the back because I thought the back was more interesting, so I purposely put different colours in the spool and made it run out quicker, which takes forever because you're constantly re-threading and redoing. Um, but I did it on purpose because I liked the line because it gave me this uh, two two colour things meshing like quite painterly which I really liked. Um, so then I had those and then I stuck them on some felt and machine around them and I stuck them on more felt and machine around them and then I stuffed them basically and just made these wonderful little squidgy things that I think I'll be making more of because they're just fun. With this one I wanted again to use the, the lovely um, things you can see how squidgy they are but I wanted to come off the edge and break three of the rectangle and that's, I don't often use straight rectangular things in my work, so I purposely sort of did a straight rectangular thing so that I could have the contrast um, of something trying to escape or to degrade or to, you know, break up um, and using the circles and also it's that sort of coming through that boundary of the, of the edge I suppose is what I was trying to do that. And it fits very nicely next to the one, the, the one next to you. This one pool. Mm. Um, this one I actually uh, is a slightly old piece. I didn't make it for the show but it's a beautiful piece so I thought I'd bring it. Um, but I, I made that for an exhibition that was about, you had um, everyone in the, who was exhibiting the, in the exhibition had the same photograph to work from. So again, it's from a photograph, uh, but it was a photograph of a rock pool. So I'd like to think that it sort of has that essence of a rock pool. Uh, They're such beautiful organic shapes. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't, I, I don't think I sort of think, um, oh, I'm going to make a, an organic shape today. <laughs> but they, they sort of turn out that way I, because I don't think in anything in the world is ever really square. I mean, well, you know, you could say that box is square, but it isn't really, because it'll be all quite wiggly and, you know. And so, I, I just think it's like a natural thing, and, and part of, because the work is about, um, you know, about decay and, and things sort of wearing and breaking down, I think that you, you need that, you know, element of, of nature in there. And then you've moved into form work with the third one along. Into more of a 3D. You had a bit of that in your last exhibition. I think you had two, whereas mm -hmm. now looking around at this show, you've really extended that idea. Even with this one, actually, you might not be able to see it from where you are, but from the side, it does, it comes out. Um, so I have been trying to bring that 3D element more into my pieces. I think the, the, the difficulty, and I think any textile artist will tell you this, is getting things to shows. And so if they're too bulky or they're too three-dimensional, you know, it, your box is enormous um, and your postage costs and everything else. So you have that dilemma. Yes. So I, I like to make them slightly three-dimensional because I, I have a line in my statement saying about how they hover between two dimensions and three dimensions, so they become 
off the wall, they're not just a picture, but they're almost like an object in themselves. And again, I quite like that. I like them, they take on a sort of personality um, of their own, really. Um, but the logistics of getting that three-dimensional thing can be quite difficult, so you have to be quite ingenious. See, this piece is called Alderney, basically because uh, the source for it, the inspiration was from Alderney, the island of Alderney. I used to live in Guernsey, so we could get there quite easily. Uh, and in Alderney, there's a pier, and the way you get piers, you get natural erosion, salt erosion, and the sea. So that was really the main inspiration for this. Um, the pier wall, there was metal coming out of it, it was corroding, and it was all the beautiful colours, the colour palette was fantastic. So I wanted to, to show that in, in this piece. Um, and I made this um, for the Festival of Quilts originally. Um, and it is more, for me, it's, I suppose it's about as quilty as I'm really going to get, because it's almost rectangular, but I still couldn't do the straight edges. So, you know, it is broken up and everything. But, um, and it is quite padded, this one. I used Trapunto to, to create the form. Um, it's a wonderful example of how painterly you are in your approach to it. Well, I suppose the, um, it really shows because a, a lot of my work is, is um, I start with, I, I make my own sort of fabric, if you like. So I use print techniques and I, I haven't, it was funny, I, I, with moving into the house this year, the new house, I didn't have a print studio up until September time. And I was trying to make work for the show and I was lost because I didn't have my print room. And I didn't realise how much I really value, you know, having a print room. And just being able to make marks and, and, and have fun and print and use that as my base, if you like. And that's what this was a huge, um, in fact, I think it was two huge pieces of fabric. That, to me, is just the base. You know, I have to then embellish further and I did that with embroidery and couching and, and then this lower part is all solid motion stitch. So, again, I had to blend the, the motion, free motion stitch with the print. To, to sort of make it look seamless, hopefully. It's like setting up a canvas, isn't it, in yeah. the background? Yeah, because I, I have to, um, I always feel that I am a bit like a painter, that, you know, you, you start with your, your burnt umber and you add and you add and then you take away, and I do a lot of that. I do a lot of adding, I do a lot of sitting and looking and thinking, mm, that doesn't work, and I whip a bit out and I add a bit on, so it's very much like a painting process, but it takes a lot longer because I've got to stitch it. Yes. So I think this is your hero piece, isn't it? Yeah, I really like this one. It's one of my favourites. Um, just now and again, you do a piece and you think, oh, I love that piece. I, don't, it was like, I, I thought, I hope no one buys it. I want to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. What is it about this piece? Um, I don't know. I, just, I really love the colours. I think it just, it's everything that I like. <laughs> It's rusty, it's the shape, the textures, and I really enjoyed making it, and it worked. I mean, sometimes you make things and it takes forever, and you sort of think, hmm. And also you make things and you think, I could improve that, I could have done that, I could have done that. And actually, with this one, I thought, no, oh, I'm really happy with it. So it was just one of those pieces that comes along every now and again, and you think, thank goodness for that, you know. Um, so yeah, I just love it. It just made me very happy. And where to from here for you? you uh, I'm going to do a bit of playing. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like for you? Uh, well, that looks like being in my print room. Um, Overlooking the most beautiful river in I, Scotland. <laughs> I'm very lucky. The, the Murray Firth. Um, it's, it's beautiful. It's like being in a little caravan. And um, the sun pours in and I'm just, I'm just really looking forward to just doing anything I want and to experiment, you know, having that freedom just for a while, just to try and come up with something new and different and, and just to explore, really. That's my thing. That's why I am looking forward to that very much. This exhibition, to me, has much more abstraction and less defined uh, objects and shapes in it, like yeah. the last exhibition you yeah. had. A lot of um, numbers and yeah, images, think... whereas this one, it feels to me like you've moved your work quite significantly so. Well, I think I went through a phase of thinking 
uh, people had to have an idea. I think people sometimes struggle with my work because they can't. They, I think people struggle with abstract work, not just my work, because they can't put a thing on it. They can't say, "Oh, that's the sea," or "That's something else," you know. And I, I, for some reason, thought, well, maybe I should give them a clue as to where things came from. And I, I'm, I don't think that worked for me. Uh, it'd be interesting to see the impact, the, the beautiful skies and oh, landscape. And I know. I know. I'm wondering if that will, you know, affect me or, or not. I don't know because it's the the views of stunning, mm. and I, you know, you can't help being mm. inspired by it. The light is fantastic mm. up in the highlands. So. So do go online on Timeless Textiles and have a look at this show. It's beautiful and it's worth looking at the detail and taking some time just to look into every tiny little bit. And I love all these positive negative spaces yeah. that you've put in. They I really like to work. make them, I like to, so that you see something when you close up, but also they work. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Far away. Yeah. Congratulations on your work. And I'm so proud to have you back here. Oh, thanks, Anne.